life, it, you take it for what it comes. If it comes happy, you're happy. But if it doesn't, you leave it roll off your shoulders. I have had a very good life. There is nothing that I would change if I had it to live over. No regrets at all. I was born October 24th of 22. My parents were uh, Jesse McCoy and Vera Clo McCoy. We had three siblings, two brothers, and myself. I grew up in Merriam, Indiana. It was a very small town with a population of uh, possibly 40 people. In fact, if you blink your eyes, you'd miss it. I went to a one-room schoolhouse. We were taught reading, writing, and arithmetic. We didn't have all the niceties that you have today. On the farm, we had a very interesting life. Each of the siblings, my two brothers and myself, we had three ponies. Uh, it was a lot of fun because in those days you didn't have everything that you have today to play with. So the ponies were our main playthings. Growing up on the farm, we learned to work. When I was five years old, I was milking five cows. I have done everything from dig ditches to pitch manure, and at three o'clock in the morning, many a time, my mother would wake me up. I'd have to go down and shut the chicken coop and then go back to bed. I think all through life, I value that if you have a job to do, you do it. You don't, it doesn't matter whether you like it or not. It's just there and you do it. My father went to Tennessee to bring cattle back and he would have big cattle sales. On the way back, uh, he had to cross a railroad. The railroad uh, gates were not working. And uh, so when he went across the railroad, uh, the train came and it hit him. I was 13 years old at the time of the accident. Well, all of a sudden it made me grow up. My mother was very self-sufficient. We dressed chickens and took them to the Fort Wayne Bar Street Market. I worked at the market until I was 17. I spent my high school years at a school called Charbusco High School. I was in a lot of different activities at school. I was in girls basketball. I was in the band, the Latin club. I was in archery and in the rifle club also. My best friend and I were salutatorium and valedictorium. And because we were so close in the grade level, they didn't name either one of us as valedictorian. They gave us honors for both of us. There was a roller rink called Lincolndale. We would go there skating every so often. Well, one of the nights that we were there, Jim and a friend were there, and he paid a quarter to the friend to ask me to skate with him. My first impression of Jim was that he was a good, clean-cut boy, very good-looking, and uh, of course, like any girl that age, I was impressed. I would almost have to say that it was love at first sight because within three months we were married. Jim proposed about like everyone else does, you know, are you ready to get married? Well, naturally, I said yes. Jim's parents were very good to me and took me in like one of their own. We lived in an apartment above their house at the time that we were married.
We had two children at the time that he was drafted. Jim was drafted in 1943, and we had about 11 days from the time that they, he got his notice until he was taken. He joined the Air Force and became a pilot, and he flew C-46s and C-47s. Jim did name a plane. It was a C-47, and he called it Marge. Of course we had rough times. When he went to service, uh, we had mortgage on the house. We had a car. I needed to get a job. So I went from place to place and finally begged for a job at Salisbury Axel. And I worked there during the war. And what they did was make gears for airplanes. At that time, I made $1.10 an hour, and because that was working nights, I made a quarter extra than I would have made if I worked days. And I used to send Jim money, because by the time he paid for his dry clean, bought his toothpaste and all the necessities, he had $13 a month to spend. Jim flew the hump in China, which was a very dangerous deal, uh, transporting troops back and forth. C-47 transports flying troops to Jigyang, China, where the U.S. 14th Air Force base is threatened by an advancing Japanese column. When Jim came back, I hadn't seen him for around a year. Kent was born after he went overseas. So when he came back, there were three instead of two. So it was a, it was a great day. The idea behind a roller rink was Jim wanted to get into a business that if something happened to him, I would be able to continue. This is roller skating, America's favorite fun sport, a wholesome year-round recreation. Today, more than 18 million Americans are roller skating enthusiasts. I was 23, Jim was 25. We went to every bank in town. There was only one bank called People's Bank that would give us money because we had 33000 but that wasn't near enough. It cost us 85000 to build the rink. It took us five years to pay off the loan. It took a year to build the roller dome. The house is attached to the rink because it was a place that we could live. When we built the rink, we didn't have money to finish up the house. We had blankets at the doors for doors. The floors were not finished, but it was livable. My mother thought that all the kids were, would end up with pneumonia because it wasn't finished, but it was fine. In those days when you had children, they always said that you had to stay in the hospital for 10 days. I never stayed in the hospital for 10 days. And probably after the third or fourth day, I was back in the rink working. When I was 17, if anyone would have said that you're going to have 12 children, I would have told them they were out of their mind. The children that Jim and I have are Kenny, Keith, Kent, Kurt, Karen, Carl, Kevin, Kathy, Kim, Chris, Kay, and Colleen. We lived as a family in the back for 26 years. We went to church every Sunday. When we went to church, we took up a whole pew. Um, we would always worry for fear one of the children were going to act up, but we had many people come up and say, oh, they're so well behaved. Well, we're a nervous wreck, but they're fine. On Sunday dinner, everyone was home because when we got home from church, everyone was there. I always cooked the Sunday dinner. Now, they were not allowed to talk at the table which may have been wrong, I don't know, but that's the way we had to work it. We had a Volkswagen bus that I drove them to school, the Roller Dome bus. 
which had roller dome all over the sides of it. We didn't have seat belts, thank God, because we would have had to have had three cars driving all the time. When we had the 61 Cadillac, we did get about 10 people in it. There would be four in the back seat and two in the front seat with me, and then a couple of them would sit on the back with their feet in the back seat. The children enjoyed it. The children had their pony. The name of the pony was Teddy. Uh, I always had a pony when I was young. My brothers had ponies, so it was just a natural thing to do. It was fun. It was not a planned event to have 12 children, but neither one of us had ever regretted it. I lived on three hours of sleep for about 26 years because with working at the rink, making three schools every morning, um, scrubbing the rink twice a week, there just wasn't any time for anything else. If I could sit down for 15 minutes, I would go to sleep and wake up and feel like I'd had an all night sleep. When we first opened the rink, we played 45 records. Say hey, good looking. What you got cooking? How's about cooking something up with me? Then we had an organ and we hired an organist. We used to have what they call the Grand March. We had couples only. We had trios. All of the children worked at the rink at some time. I have one son who said he was never a child. He was always an employee. When the children worked for us, they didn't have an allowance, but they worked in the rink. They got paid for working and they had to put half of everything that they made in the bank. Jim and I worked 24-7 together, so I would say that was very good because you don't have that relationship too much. If Jim had ideas, um, I would go along with the flow. Sometimes I would suggest something and he would say, oh no, we can't do that. But three or four months later, we were doing it. And that was okay, too. Now, like everyone who works 24-7, you have some disagreements. And believe it or not, I got fired several times, but I didn't have sense enough to stay away. He didn't rehire me, I just showed up. Jim always said that he couldn't afford to get rid of me because it would cost him too much. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. Well, the height of roller skating was probably in the 1950s. We would have dances after skating. We would have all day skates, and on all day skates, we would skate. 1,300 children here, all at the same time. You could barely move. The all-night skates, we start at 7.30, and they're here till 6 o'clock the next morning. They still call me up and say, on an all-night skate, do you have good supervision? I tell them that mean old lady is still here. We have always had New Year's Eve skates. Now, the children were allowed to skate on the New Year's Eve. However, the girls had to go behind the concession counter because there's always a lot of kissing going on on New Year's Eve. The girls were not allowed to watch the people kiss or do all the gyrations that they do. I was a very stinky mother. The children were involved in skating. Uh, they all either were on the speed team 
or they did um, dance skating. When we had conventions, uh, they would, we would take them to nationals and they competed in skating. I remember going to one competition, and I know you'll think this is funny, but a couple of the older boys, I sit there and to keep them occupied while they weren't skating, they did crocheting and embroidering. Whatever works. <laughs> we embraced the disco era with our lighting. We did put in neon, uh, we put in disco balls, we changed different lighting and different coloring. I had a very hard time getting used to music like the BJs. They started more into wearing shorts and um, jeans and long pants. There are times that girls come to the window now, or even mothers, and I say, I have plenty of safety pins. Would you like to pin up your top? I'm very obnoxious, really. <laughs> we did go on vacations every year, usually for two weeks. And we have traveled with the children to every state in the Union except Alaska. We've been everywhere. We traveled mostly in a Pontiac station wagon and a 16-foot travel trailer that we pulled behind. We could fit anywhere from eight to 10. We went to see Mount Rushmore. We were going to just drive through, look at it, and leave. We stayed there for four days. The children were so sick of it, they said they never want to go there again. We all went to Niagara Falls. We didn't visit Niagara Falls just one time. We probably went to Niagara Falls at least four to five times. Everyone seemed to enjoy it, and so we went back. And I, like I say, if we'd have went one more time, I think Jim would have jumped over the falls. I think he had that in mind that he would be able to go over it in a barrel. He was very innovative, and I think he felt that he could do it and make it. When we first looked at the property at the Lake Cottage, it was a teepee there. But we decided to buy it because who wants you to come to their house with 12 children? Nobody. They're, they're thinking disaster before ever you get there. So we decided to buy ground and build a lake cottage, and it would be a place that they could all congregate. It was relaxing. At the lake cottage, the children, they would water ski. They would uh, go on floats behind the raft. They had picnics there. There were different times that all the children were there and the grandchildren. They had birthday parties. It was just a place they could go and air out. The Lake Cottage has many memories. Everyone needs to get away once in a while. Jim and I had a good time. Jim and I were supposed to go together. That didn't happen. Jim was sick about five years before he passed away. He started having problems that he couldn't breathe as well. When Jim went to the doctor, he found out that he had cardiomyopathy. In the last five years, he didn't come in the rink at all. 
We had a retirement party for him, uh, which was very nice. Can't believe you people. But you know where this belongs? Right there. Right there. When he passed away, I had to take over. At the time of Jim's passing, we had been married 56 years. I think that Jim and I both grew up together, and that's one of the reasons that our marriage lasted as long as it did. About two months ago, I felt someone by my side. Uh, nothing was there, but the feeling was there. Now, I thought that it was Jim, but I don't know. We have a thing here where we will have just run the vacuum and we'll walk back across the place and there's a dime laying there. We know it wasn't there when we vacuumed. So we say that Jim leaves dimes for us when he knows that we're, we're okay. Now I ask him to bring it up to a quarter because there's inflation now, but we haven't found the quarters yet. I used to think when I was 17 that 37 was ancient. Now I know it's not. I've been working at the Roller Dome for 62 years. The rink does keep me going because I draw energy from the children. I am convinced of that. Okay, how many are skating? Um, one. They'd be 550. You need skates? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not afraid to die, and I know that when time comes, that happens. But I do feel that as long as I can do it, I do draw energy from the children. I learned to work when I was young, and I think I still have that work ethic. If I have to miss being at the rink, I'm a basket case because I feel like I'm not doing what I should be. The rink is my home. It's my home away from home, I should say. And I'm comfortable here. I think that the reason I feel like it's home is because this is where we started. We did live here, we raised a family. Actually, it means my whole life. The rink means my life. Thank you for coming. I would probably say about the roller dome, the same as Jim said, we did it our way. Thank you for coming.